Hello, it is Adam and Earth Code, day five. I have read through the puzzle, we're looking at lines, and we're looking at where they overlap. Um, let's get our scaffold going, and let's clear our buffers and have a look at five. Okay, let's start, as always, by getting some test data in. Our test data for today looks like this. It's going to give us a good idea of what we need to do for passing. Um, ooh, it doesn't like this. Oh, I haven't put any equals here, that's why. Okay. Um, and then we're going to say so task, pass, task one, test. Okay. And it's time to write our parser. So. Uh, we start with nice and easy, uh, use nom, and we need uh, multi se uh, uh, sequence separated pair, we need character complete, and we need car, we need line ending, we need um, U32, um, and then we need bytes complete tag and we need a combinator map i think that should be everything we need um so wait let's define some more things here so we have and we'll debug everything for now um, so we have a coordinate uh which has got an x of u32 and a y of u32 and then we have a line which has a um, top left position. Are they all structured like this? Top left? We, we'll structure them like this. Top left of chord and bottom right of chord. Um, so this is going to be the top lo topmost. Or you know what, leftmost, and then rightmost, we'll call A, B. So we'll say uh, A is the leftmost chord, or topmost, if um, they would share the same left, right, if vertical, and then B is the bottommost chord, or... Uh, is the right uh, is the rightmost chord or bottommost if vertical? So we always read left to right, we read top to bottom if need be. That should give us some nice sort of standardization in how our lines look. Uh, you know what? Let's let's not worry if that's needed for now. We may need to add that later. Okay, and then we have lines is a vector of line. Okay, uh, this can be copy cloned. That's just, which means this can be copy cloned. Uh, let's just give ourselves maximum flexibility of what we can do with lines and coordinates. Um, and then in here, let's debug our input. Okay, so now let's write our parser. So we have a um, coord is equal to map a. Uh, look, again, let's try new style parsers. Um, which means we need to bring in parser. So coord is equal to a separated pair. Or do we go really new style? Really new style would be to U32 and car, comma, and U32. That would be a um, map. Um, X. Y. So that's like very new style. I don't know how I feel about that. I think for now, let's say separated pair. Let's use let's use separated pair. We're separated by we, we have a, a U32, a car of comma, and a U32. But then let's let's use the built-in map. And now this gives us a much nicer just sort of X Y. I like that. Okay, and then we'll say um, line is equal to a separated pair of coordinate uh, 
that arrow and coordinate. And then uh, that gets mapped into a b as a chord as a line a b and then line is equal to a separated list of um yeah, let's just make the parser pass separated list of line ending line and we will map that as lines into pass input lines and then we will call pass a pass on our input doesn't like the second use of coord because we've moved it and is map not copy i feel like these should perhaps be copy for for convenience but um, that's fine. I can simply do this. Uh, and now it's copy. Okay, so that gives us our passes. Um, and hopefully we see a nice format for task one. That looks, that looks very good to me. Um, yeah. Okay, so now let's solve task one. So for task one, what we need to do is we need to go and find all the places where these lines overlap. Um, now there is a test for if lines overlap, I think we can use. Um, yes, so the, the test is, um, trying to remember it off the top of my head. Um, oh. So there's two broad ways we could go about this. Either we could plot the grid and then check for overlaps in the grid, or we could look at the mathematical line objects and look for overlaps there. And I think we're going to do that latter one, which might make our task two a bit more complex, but um, let's go for it. So what we first want to do is we want to look at the all of our lines. We want to filter them such that for each line, um, line we, we only care about them if line uh, a x is line b x or if line a y is line b y so that will ensure we only have our horizontals and our verticals um, and of course we want to return a new size here for a count at the end okay and then we want to filter so now we only have either horizontal or vertical lines um, so to check where they intersect we have uh, possibilities uh, so 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 uh, combinations of people uh, combinations filter uh, line a line b so this is going to give us every possible combination of lines um, and we need to check for, and we'll, we'll just put a count on the end of this so that it type checks. Um, so now for our filter, we need to return Boolean, and we know we have, and we are also going to need to import editor tools to make this type check. Okay, so now we have line A and line B, and we need to determine if they overlap. So line A and o line B overlap if. Let's match them. Line A, line B. This is going to give us quite a bit of power. Um, Yes, so for this match, what we need to do is we need to have um, a line mm. Okay, you know what, let's, let's break it down even further. Line AX, line B, uh, line AY, line BX, line BY. So this is going to give us all of those sort of underlying values. So we have AX, AY, BX, BY. Okay. So, our first check for an underline, or, or line underscore A, line underscore, line underscore B, and line underscore B. Okay. So, our first consideration. I don't like that this is an. Oh, of course, line A. 
Ah, we have four possible things here. Okay, so let's use um let's use I and J to sort of separate these out a bit. So we have J A Actually, you know what? We can do this without a match the way I want to do this. Let's just do a mass destructuring. So we're going to say let line of A um, chord X is uh, IAX, Y is IAY, B of chord is X is IBX, Y is IBY, um, equal to line I. And we can actually, let's just put false here for now so the thing's type check. We can actually put this mass destructurer right here. And then we can use the exact same giant destructurer here, but replacing this with JAX, JBX, JBY, and JAY. So now we have all of our possible things that need to be compared. So now we have to consider our cases. So our cases are, first of all, if IAX is equal to IBX, then we have got a line where the X positions are the same for uh, IA. For I, rather. So if I's X positions are the same, then I is a vertical line, which means its possible intersections are with other vertical lines that are overlapping with it okay so so we also so so ix is horizontal if ibx is horizontal then we only care about any possible intersection like this let's check that if i b if if jbx is equal to jby uh to j if jax is equal to jbx so this is that case um then we only care about any potential overlap so the way we check this is if I A X. See, this is where it gets complicated because we don't have this idea of leftmost or bottommost, actually, um, which is quite annoying. Um, So do we want to have that whole rubric of leftmost and bottommost and evaluate that over here? That's what I'm trying to figure out. Um, leftmost and bottommost, uh, le leftmost or rightmost, or do we want to... I think we can actually make this a lot nicer by just having some primitives. So let's, let's do that. So we'll say line i and line j still. Um, but now this is going to evaluate as just false everywhere. Um, like that. Um, but let's let's write some, some basics. So we'll say implement uh, line and we'll say uh, is horizontal is a useful method for us to have online. And that's going to say self dot uh, a dot x equals self dot b dot x. Okay. And we also need is vertical. Which is self.a.y is self.b.y. Uh, we also need leftmost. And this is going to be self.a. Uh, self.a self.b dot min uh, into iter dot min by a b a dot uh, x dot compare with b dot x mm -hmm. 
and this must this is safe to unwrap because we we know we have elements here. Minbai comes from two distinct arguments. Okay, so it's just A and B like this. There we go. Um, and then rightmost is this is the the one that has the highest rightward extent. Um, so this is simply max by, and then topmost we'll need, um, and so this has the same format as min by, but y instead of x, and then we have bottommost. Uh, which uses yes max by and then y instead of x. Okay, so these methods should give us a very strong utility to find what we're looking for. Min by, I wonder if we could use min more practically. Um, or, or, or rather the comparison methods there is a standard comp min by. Okay, we can probably do this without the iterator then. So we can simply say min by, and we can import this from standard comp. And then how does this look? So min by takes an element owned, an element owned, and then, okay, sure. So it's self dot a, self dot b, a, b, and, th and then it's simply the same closure we would pass in here. That is a lot nicer to read. Okay, so same one here, but max by. Same one here, but min by on the y's. And then same one here, but it is max by on the y's. Okay, so that gives us some nice functions to look at a range of points. Okay, so now what we need to do in here is we need to say um, if line, and, and in here rather than doing all of this we can say line is horizontal or line is vertical. So we know we're dealing with one of these two. Um, and that gives us actually a lot of benefits here because now we can simply say uh, to compare these we can say line i is horizontal line B is horizontal. Okay, so now we are comparing these. So here we know that both of these are horizontal. They both must by, by definition be horizontal lines. If they are both horizontal lines, then we can see uh, line I leftmost. This is going to tell us how many intersections, not how many places they intersect. So what we actually want to do is return a number and have it be, um, yes, okay. So we, we want line, line i dot leftmost x. If that is less than line j dot rightmost, x then what we want to do is do uh, let's calculate these once we'll say let's i left is equal to line i dot leftmost and we'll say i right rightmost and we'll say let j and this means that actually we should have a um there are min max by, there's no min max by implemented by default. Okay, in that case, we'll leave it as it is. And we'll say we have a, um, and in fact, we can, we can pre-compute all of these um, before, our, before, our, before we even begin matching. Um, we can say, let i is line i dot topmost and we can say let i bottom is 
mine eye bottommost. Then we can repeat that for J. Okay, and now what we can do is we can, uh, let me just put a zero here so that this compiles for now, and then we can, okay. So now we only care about line I and J. If they're both, if so, if they're both horizontal, then what we care is if um, I left X is less than I, okay, so, so what we actually need to do here is we need to do, So if i left x is less than j right x, then we want i left, then we want to look at j right x minus i left x. And if they were the same, that would be an overlap of one, so we must add one to that. Else, if... Um, Else if uh, I write X is less than J, if I is right most pieces is left than J's, if, if, if I is left most is left of J's right most. Ah, oh, this is really annoying. Um, I wonder if the easiest way is to use the whole grid system that they have going on. Returns the first argument of comparison that happens them to be equal. So you can use this to do. Um, okay, I had to do something real quick and I hit um, stop recording instead of pause, like a fool. Um, you can see it only a minute or so has passed, so I've not really had much time to do anything. All I'm going to do is, I think we have to go to the techniques that they are using rather than trying to be clever and project it onto a grid. And mark on a grid how many lines are present at each location. And then we can do a, a sort of summative approach over that. Okay, so let's... Let's rework this and we'll say... Uh, Field is equal to, we need to know how large this is to be. Um, array to from iter. And let's, for now, let's just return nothing here so that this type checks. So from iter. Oh, okay, you can only do array one from iter, can't you? I discussed that, I discovered that yesterday. And then we'll do into shape of uh, we need to figure out what our field size is. Okay, so we'll say um, I think we're going to need this for both of them, but with a modified logic. So let's do it individually. So we'll say let um, right let let bounds is equal to input dot um, lines dot iter. And then all we care about is what is the furthest to the right and the furthest down for each line um, point. Um, so what we, what we want to do is do lines.iter.map each line. We want to do max by, and we want to do maximum of a dot. We have two things that we need to do maximum of. We want the maximum of a dot x. Um, 
max a dot x dot max b dot x or a a a dot line a x dot max line b x and we want line y max line b y and that's going to get us our our boundary for this this map um, and then we want to find the max that was that's going to give us the maximum of each possible element and then we want to fold that over zero zero y x uh, x y mx my mx max x my max y and so this is going to give us uh, bounds this is going to give us our bounds and so now we can use our bounds as our shape we can build from our field from an uh, from value of from lm of array 2 of bounds and zero what doesn't it like here from an element two from element of bounds Is the the structure that they give here as an example? Yeah, let me see what it says in the compiler output here. I mentioned it's not implemented for U thirty two U thirty two. Okay, let's have a look at um, ND array. We'll look at uh, from LM. And we care about that this is a shape builder, which is implemented for any mention. It should be implemented for this. Ah, it's because they're not U sizes, they're U32s. So we need to say we can make that work. We can say uh, this is bound x bound y and then in here we can say bound x as u size bound y as u size and that should now work okay cool so now we have our field of positions now what we want to do is we want to say four element in field uh, sorry four uh, line in input lines So now we have a line. Um, it really is going to be so much easier if we can reliably go from lowest to highest. So I think I am going to do that here. It was my instinct and I should have trusted my instinct. So we're going to say let low is equal to min by is there, is there really no min max? Is it only on iterators? Only on iter tools, perhaps. It's only on iter tools. Okay, that's fine. Well, we can do that. We can so we can say um, a b dot into iter dot min max by a b a dot x dot compare b dot x then a dot y dot compare b dot y that should be a nice min max checker and wrap um, It's a min max result. Which 
Okay, sure. Um, into option unwrap. Okay, right. So now we have our um, low and our high, which we'll call A and B, and then those can go into there. Okay, so now we know A is lower than B. That's very useful for us because now we can say um, for Y in. For this one, we can simply say for y in 0 to line dot, uh, for, for, for y in uh, line dot a dot y to line dot b dot y, for x in line dot a dot x to line dot b dot x, um, field dot pol uh, dot get mute um, x, y, and we will say mute field and for now let's unwrap this just so that if we have a sizing error we can catch it and this goes up by one it doesn't like x y again because they are not u sizes um, let's let's make everything a u size um, there is no u size parser but i'm going to just convert them here um because now it's going to complain about it here so i can say chord x is u size and y Y is U size. And so now everything is a U size. And U32 should on almost all systems be able to sanely convert to U size. So that feels fine to me. Okay, so now that gives us our field. And let's um let's actually debug our field. Let's see what it is. Um, and see if it matches what they have for their field. Ah, no, because we're not only looking at horizontals right now. So for here we want to actually say lines filter dot filter. Um line and we want to say line dot a dot y is equal to line dot b dot y or line dot a dot x is equal to line dot b dot x and the other thing is i think our lines are inclusive which means we need to do it like this and we need our bounds to be one higher and so now we should have Now, does this mentally in my head look anything like this? Two, 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 one, 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 rather than two, 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 one, one, one. Okay. The one, one there. Just transposing this in my head. You've got the one, 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 two. You've got a single two floating there. So all that's missing. Ah, oh, no, the top row is up here. Okay, so that that looks correct to me. Perfect. It's rotated weirdly, but it's correct. Now, ah, this is a 10 by 10 grid. Is it always going to be square? If it's always going to be square, we won't run into an error. Um, I don't think we have a good way of knowing if it's going to be square. But um, highest in this is 9, and so this should be 1, 2, 3. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yes, okay, so I was right to do the plus one. Okay, so now what we can do is we can simply say that the well, I mean so, so the output of this should be easy. The output of this should be field dot um iter dot map n uh, dot dot map n is equal to two uh, filter count. And then this should be we are looking for a value of five. Should be we are looking for a value of five and we get a value of five okay so let's run that on our real input i'm really not a huge fan of this grid based approach but i think the puzzle is assuming it based on their visualization so that's what i'm going to do that's not the right answer so that's a problem because that means that um our, the, our only test case we've been given fails, but the real problem passes, which is, that, that's very concerning when that happens. And it means that you're basically in for a world of trouble. Why is that the case? I'm 
just gonna try swapping X and Y in iteration order. Okay, and then let's try going Y, X like this. This shouldn't make a difference. It does. Okay, they're not of a consistent size. Okay, well, I've, I've always been using the left index and X and the right index as Y, so they, this should, shouldn't make a difference. Um, and then if I, if I make these not equal, then this should fail on a boundary condition, right? Yes, that fails on a boundary condition. Okay. Um, ooh, what is... That is an, an odd one, then. Um... where at least two lines overlap. Reading the question. Advents of codes have lots of words in them that obfuscate what it is you're actually trying to do. Now part two, we're going to include our diagonals, right? Yes. Because of the limits of the hydrothermal vent mapping system, the lines in your list will only ever be horizontal vertebral or diagonal lines at exactly 45 degrees. Okay, that's very useful. An entry like this covers points. No, an entry like this, considering all the lines above, you still need to determine the number of points where the two lines overlap. Oh, okay. Um, this is actually easy. This is um, yes. We want to do a zip operation on our x and our y, but we want it to be zip longest. Um, well, we don't want it to be. We want it to be. We want it to go until they're both finished, but we want to always have a value. Because zip longest stops returning a value. I think we implement this manually. We say x iter is line a x up to line b. Uh, we will do this in part two, obviously. Um, so in here. All that needs to change is our, our computation of the field. So we can say, um, well, actually, we can we can do the same computation in both and pull that out into a function. All we need, to, the only difference is that we're filtering out the horizontal and vertical lines here. So let's do it in here. So we'll say let line uh, let let you x pos is equal to line a x up to line b x, and we'll say let y position is equal to line b x up to line a x and we can actually use the the underlying implementation of the way range uh, iterator works because if you look if i say x dot if i say let x pause equal x pause dot or if i say uh, x pause dot next x pause dot next actually is going to return uh, an option of a um, a range inclusive, or oh, it's a u size. Does this work differently to how range works? Um, it's in ops range rs, but it's not in range rs. It's in core source iter range rs range inclusive. Implement iterator for range inclusive, where the item is a next spec next is empty. Oh, it modifies itself, right? I can, we can make this work, I think. Um, so what we can do is we can say, um, 
last x is none and last y is none. Um, we're just writing, we're writing the iterator implementation here manually, essentially. Um, these we can remove the type hints in a minute. Okay. So now what we need to do is we need to say, uh, loop next x is x pos dot next y is y pos dot next if next x is sum and next y is sum then we break out the loop otherwise last x is equal to last x or next x and last y is equal to last y or next y. So now we, we sort of have that saturating behavior I wanted. These are a u size. Why are these a u size? Because these are a u size. Okay, well, let's just remove the type hinting on here now that it knows what they are. Okay. And so that gives us our x and our y. And so these both either should exist or neither of them should exist, assuming our iterator has at least one element. We'll say if let sum x sum y be equal to last x last y, this will almost always be true. Uh, there's some circumstances where this can fail, and then we can say field.getMute is x, y. Let uh, sum v, if let sum v is equal to this, then v it goes up by one. This has unnecessary extra parentheses around the edge of it. Right. X sum y is equal to last x last y. Then if let sum v is equal to Does this still pass? Interesting, it goes forever. I wonder why that loops forever, because next x should eventually end complete and, and y next should eventually complete. Right, we were going through every single Like if I if I debug these values Okay, and then I run this on my test case. Where do we get stuck? Oh, this should be is none and is none. If we got nothing from both from then end. Duh. Sure. Okay, now run this test and pass. Left is zero, right is five. That's very odd. I think let's, uh, let's debug X and Y. That's gonna give us a good idea of what's going wrong here. X is 2, Y is 2, then X is 7, Y is 7, with nothing in between. What? I have these the wrong way around. This should be next X or last X. This should be next Y or last Y. That 
I find it very hard to believe that changed nothing about the behavior here. <laughs> Last why is none. A range inclusive should always have at least one value. I wonder how many how long people have been shouting that at their screen. Okay, this passed, which is a good sign. Uh, it means probably our program works. Um, so let me say uh, we'll have a function called simulate field, and it takes in a list of lines, like so. And it will return you a. Um, and we still want ones where it's greater than 12. Um, simulate field, uh, find field overlaps and this returns us a size count um okay wonderful and so now what we do is we just copy paste most of this into here but we no longer want to care we, we no longer want to use for line in line we want to use for line in lines and in here we want to just use lines And then at the end, we wish we still wish to return field iter count. Okay, so now what we can do is in this function here, we can say return OK. There's an OK of simulate the. Find field overlaps of uh, let's say let no uh, only horizontal or vertical is equal to input dot lines dot uh, iter dot copied dot map line or filter line dot a dot x is line dot b dot x or line dot a dot y is line dot b dot y cool. uh, this yeah we'll collect this only horizontal or vertical and then that should be that working with an reference to it. Now if we run this test, we should get the same result. We do. Let's remove our debugging. They're very noisy. Um, and then let's run the task proper and check we get f the same output. We do. Okay, and now task two should be very simple because it should be find field overlaps input dot lines. It should be that simple. And then for this, for task two, they said we would get a result of uh, 12 points. Test. Fails. Interesting. We only find eight of them. Number of points for at least two lines overlap. In the world example, this is still anywhere. Okay, well, let's let's compare our diagrams and see if we can figure out what's going wrong. Um, so this for this, we need to just debug the field. Let's have a look at the field. Uh, let's have a look at the field on our test case. Here it looks as we expect, and here it looks... Just go through checking it. So we have a one, a big gap, and then... No one there. Two there. Okay, so there's all, I'm already seeing some errors. Zero, one, one, and there's two at the bottom. So we so our bottom line is going two, 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 and then the one still. That's fine. 
but then we are definitely missing some content. I wonder if we are ever in a position we will we will of, we will of course have some lines that are going the wrong way for both of them okay that's what's happening here it's not rendering the lines that go the wrong way for both of them so really in here what we want is we want to do line uh, let line a uh, blacks is equal to max um line dot uh to line dot a dot x dot max line dot b dot x and let um, uh, min and then let hacks is equal or, or h lx and hx and then this one here is max and then this one here we wish to go from lx hx and then let's actually just inline these don't have a helpful inline for me that's fine we'll do it manually okay and then we can do the same for this so we say line l dot a dot y dot min line dot b dot y uh, and then here it is dot max line dot b dot y now this should pass because now we're correctly drawing in all the lines even the ones that go backward fifteen we found too many that is very odd to me how do we find too many lines Interesting, we have a two in the top right hand corner now. Very peculiar. Um, AX to AX, BX to BX, AY to AY to BY, AY. BY, min max, min max. This looks okay to me. We're going from our lowest line in the Y to our highest in the Y. I'm look at this in a notepad real quick where it should be a bit easier for me to visually inspect. Yes, that's much better. Uh, so what's gone wrong here is our bottom one line is still fine, 222111. We've still not picked up a 1 and we've somehow picked up a 2 here as if we're drawing this diagonal twice now. Line AX minimum to maximum ay to by minimum to maximum okay well let's look at all of our last x and our last y again and see where this goes wrong so let's run this and hopefully we can figure this out. Not run this, let's test this. The run will have way too much output. So we're starting with 0924. Okay, so 0919293949599. Nine, 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 nine. 0959 done, then we do. Ah, let me disable passing for task one, as that just adds a lot of uh, doing. That just makes us do it twice, basically. Okay, so 0919293949, then we have Ah I see. That's very annoying. 
Okay. No, no, no. We can do this. Um... So, so the problem is the line is getting kind of flipped 90 degrees by this equation here. So we, we do want to say from A to B, like this. If one of these goes sort of um, the wrong way, we need to make sure the range inclusive goes the wrong way, which it, it can't by default. Um, but what we can do is we can say that this is going to be a range inclusive. Yes, okay. So we can say in here that this 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 only needs to be an iterator, right? Xpos is just some iterator. Um to the point where we can make it a, a, a we will need the reverse iterator basically. Um Now, I don't think there is a reliable reversible range implementation. So let's let's do some dynamic dispatch. Let's say that this is a box dyn iterator item is u size. And this one here is also going to be a box dyn iterator, and we're going to say if line.a.x is less than line.b.x, then we return this. Else we return. Oh, it's the same thing either way. That's fine. Um, we just need to get our iterator exactly right here. So we'll say um, base is this, and then we'll say if line.a.x is less than line.b.x or less than or equal to, um, then base is fine. We can just box it and return it. Else we need to box and return base dot reverse, and then we can do the exact same logic, but for in here. And in fact, in rather than this, we can use uh, base dot start and base dot end. Now it's even more generic, and we can paste it here, and we can call this y position, and we can say from y to y. And now this should work for the case where we're going backward. Eight. Really? I thought that was going to work. Um, because now we have a reverse, the, the iterator going backwards when it's... Um, Still not drawing in the backwards line properly. Why not? I mean, really, the overcomplication here comes from me trying to solve both with both with the same equation. But it's a. Uh, I mean, advent of code. The point of advent of code is to challenge yourself, not just have the write an easy sort of ad hoc solution. Um. Oh, of course this won't work. Of course this won't work, because we're reversing an iterator that is that doesn't exist anyway. What we need to do is we need to say... Um, yes, okay, so we'll say if line AX is less than line BX, then this is line AX to this. Otherwise, it is line BX to line AX dot reverse and this is the formula for what we want so this is y position this is a, this doesn't exist anymore there's no more base this is a y uh, th no this is a y 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 and this is a y and now 
This should pass. It does, wonderful. And so now if I remove the field debugging and I remove the element debugging, this day will be very slow to run. We have something that uses the same code for each solution. And it gives me an answer of this number here. And that's right, we've completed day five. Now let's clean this up a lot. So we can start by just removing things that aren't being used anymore, like that and like array one. Um, and then let's have a look and see if Clippy would like to shout at us about anything. This is just generally easy code quality improvements. Okay, no. So now, I don't like this um, whole sort of double mutable nonsense going on here. And I especially don't like these dynamically dispatched iterators, but I think this is the best way to do this, to have a single solution that solves everything. And it's, it's just manually implementing the iterator. But the more, the only thing I might think could change is changing this to take some iterator type, but we need to iterate through it twice. So that actually makes, I think, I think this is a decent solution. I'm not a huge fan of some of the ways I've solved things. I would rather have used some more clever, um, overlap calculations, but I think this is a fine solution. We no longer need to debug these. You don't need to remove your debug statements. It doesn't cost you anything to have them, but um, I've removed them now. Um, and these also probably don't need to be copy clone. I'm probably just copy cloning them out of habit in places. Okay, then you know what? No, they do. Sure. Okay, um, let's say that that is good then. Uh, thank you very much for watching. I'll have to glue these two recordings together and upload them.